All right, guys, so today we're starting the video with Melina's car because her steering like keeps locking and she couldn't drift it. And we figured it out that her steering shaft is actually hitting the ISR header. So the only way to really fix that is to try to dent the header a little bit. So I'm gonna just try to use a extension and a hammer and wedge it between there and just try to dent it because it really doesn't need much, but that's super unsafe and uh, needs to be fixed. So I tried to bend the header a little bit and as you can see, like her motor mounts, like look how much I can move the engine. Try to bend it real quick. All right, turn your steering wheel. Yeah. Damn, it still hits. All right, yeah, we got to really bend that. All right, start it up. I think I bent that header. All right, turn. Hell yeah, it's fixed. All right, so Zach's about to switch out his springs real quick with the stiff ass springs in and taking those ones out. I'm actually about to drop my front subframe. It's just one of those things that needs to come out. It's pretty simple. You got your suspension bolts, undo your brake lines, and then you have the bolts up here along with your sway bar and drop the uh, power brace bars or whatever they're called. Then they make a Nismo power brace. I don't know if this one's actually called a power brace, but all that needs to come off. There you go. Was it good? Mm -hmm. All right. So I'm about to roll under here. <laughs> the song's lit. All right, so you got your subframe bolts, sway bar bolts, which are hard to see. And then right here, Jesus, I'm so close. We got those bolts. So I'm gonna go ahead and just knock all those out and I lower it down on the jack. Now we're pulling the tension rods off. I was gonna drop it all as one like big piece, but then I knew it was all coming apart anyways, and I'd rather do it while it's on the car, take it off piece by piece, because if you do it off the car, it's gonna look like that. And everything's gonna be everywhere. It's gonna be really hard to do it. He's not taking his fully apart. We're actually gonna take mine and his up to like our local car wash and probably uh, clean them all up. We don't know if we're gonna paint them yet. Well, no, I'm gonna paint mine. I'm trying to talk Zach into painting his engine bay with me and do matching engine bays. Spray paint? Spray. Leave it in the comments what color you want it to be. I already be. know what color I want mine to be. Okay, I'll we'll leave it decide. in the comments anyway. Uh, yeah, I'll let them decide. if they. What are the options? It's got, it wants, the options! We want it, to, got... we want it to be a light color. Yeah. We don't want, don't want it to be dark. We want to be able to see Damn, our oil leaks. Bird. Our oil leaks. I mean, I had no oil leaks. Anyways, though, like, spray painting your engine bay is okay, like, as long as you take everything apart. Like, if you go ahead and take the brake booster apart and get all your brake lines out of the way, most likely it's going to turn out right. But if you try doing it with your fuse box here and, you know, with your windshield motor and then tape that off, it's just, it usually won't turn out that good. So if you have the opportunity to paint it when it's all apart, that's the best time to go ahead and do it. So I got my tension rod off. I'm going to do the other one. Then I'm going to take the sway bars off. And then I'm going to be able to take off. I always forget what these are called. I know the Nismo makes a power brace. I don't know if, whatever. And then we can do the uh, steering rack and the subframe. And it'll be pretty much ready to go. And I'm going to sand down the whole thing today and get rid of all the seam sealer and possibly stitch weld. I don't know if that's happening though. All right, so got the other tension rod out. So you can see, I'm gonna keep the bolts. Now I just gotta unbolt the sway bar. Actually, yeah, unbolt the sway bar, take these out, and then I'm gonna lower the subframe down as a whole with the sway bar connected. All right, guys, so we got the subframe, the subframe, sorry. The torsion bar braces off, whatever you're gonna call it. I'm gonna be getting a Nismo power brace, so it doesn't really matter. So those are out, sway bar is on the ground. Uh, the last thing to do is you got your two main bolts on each side for the subframe, uh, your uh, upper struts for the, basically the top of the coilovers, brake lines, and then don't forget to take off your steering shaft. Um, you just don't want to bend that or anything. I'm also going to be replacing the rubber bushing in there with the ISR steel one. And then this is my friend Tyler that I met. He, uh, he watches the channel. That's one of the guys I met, and uh, he's pretty cool. He's uh, real big into editing and stuff. So he might help me learn about that. But yeah, let's get this thing out and uh, let's get it on the ground and see what we got to do. All right, so everything's unbolted. The subframe is actually completely unbolted. We just got to undo the brake lines real quick. And I have the jack holding it up, so I'm going to go ahead and undo the top of the suspension also. And I think the steering shaft is going to kind of hold it up. So we might have to wiggle with that, but let me pop this off real quick. 
We got it all unbolted, as you can see, the fucking pimped out. I'm hoping that this just slides off. If it doesn't, I have a fourth thing. Yeah, see, it's already sticking to it. Let's see. Yeah, no, we need to slide that off. So, let me get my fourth thing. Should usually, it took Zach's off pretty easy. Yeah. You don't want to mess it up. All right, so we got it out. I just had to tap with the hammer and split the splines a little bit with the uh, flathead. Now we should be able to just pick up the coil over, and then we'll just slide it forward on the jack. Oh, that works. That really <laughs> don't matter. All right, go ahead and put it down. Lean the coil over in. Cool. All right, so the subframe's out of the car. It's actually so heavy in the back, I had to put the tires under there because it was trying to do a wheelie. So yeah, it's out of the car. And now the reason I did that is because I got to take these brake lines out first of all, because I'm getting chase bay lines, but I'm going to be stitch welding all this, getting rid of all the seam sealer. So when I paint it, it turns out really smooth. So that's what's going on with that. All right, so my front end of my 240 was never like super solid. And I think I figured out one of the reasons why. Oh, I thought it would come out, let's see. No, it didn't come out. But as you can see, like the torsion bars are completely blown. So when I replace them, that's gonna like help things a lot with the rigidity and then plus it, Jesus, it's about to fall now. It's not even touching the jack. <laughs> that's funny. So yeah, like I said, the Nismo power brace is basically those two pieces with a pole connected to them. So that's gonna help rigidity. And then if you guys keep asking, am I doing a tube chassis? Yes, I am, but I'm just waiting for the 1J. There's gonna be a plate right here and it's gonna come down and go to the frame rails. And then I'm also gonna have a strut bar. So the front end will be super solid. So I'll be getting asked and nothing should get bent. But now we're about to pull my coilovers off because we're gonna take the, uh, the rear subframe out. And then we're taking both subframes up to the car wash to go ahead and power wash them, get them all clean and ready for paint. So let's get started on that. All right, so should drop right out now. There's gonna be a little hose under there. I got to do for the diff. There we go. Rear end is out. And uh, now we just gotta drag it out of there. All right, guys. So everything is out of this car. This car is stripped to no nuts in it. <laughs> no nuts. So Melina and Zach are taking apart my rear coilovers right now. As you can see, front subframe is gone. Rear subframe. Do it hand loose. It should be hand loose. It's gone. You have to hold it up for her. Yeah. Don't crack my window. Hand loose. Yeah. He, they're taking off the coilovers for you? me. I know. Rear subframe is out. The reason I'm doing that because all the control arms are getting replaced with adjustable ones. Interior completely stripped. Pedal box is gone. I don't want it. I'm not. Oh, you don't need that's that. That's all right, that's coming up. Uh, rear coilover is out. We gotta do the other one. Yeah, screw those back on. I know. Yeah, I got it. Look at that weld went through. Oh, yeah, I know. Where'd you put, you want them up with the other ones? Yeah, just lay it right there on the ground. Other cool. side. The coilovers are out. Everything's out. The last thing to do is get that little plastic piece off and a couple other little small things. All right, so we're going out to Mexico real quick. Zach wanted to go drifting before he went to work. So we're going to let Melina try a little bit in the 240. And uh, Zach's going to kill it in the 300. So let's go. I wish we could do stuff in the Miata, but sadly it's an open diff. Oh well, we're going to have some fun. Go ahead.
All right, guys, so that's the end of today's video. Uh, we got everything done that I wanted to do today. Front subframe out, rear subframe out, uh, pedal box out, booster, all that done. The car is absolutely stripped. There's like not a bolt in this car that hasn't been touched. Actually, there's like not a bolt in this car right now. So the reason I took the front end apart, the back end apart, um, because I'm doing all the control arms, the front end, uh, we are gonna be doing an angle kit, so all that had to come out, and I wanna cut my steering rack and move the rack forward, or cut the subframe and move the rack forward. But we gotta do all the stitch welding on the engine bay. Couldn't get back here because of the booster, so went ahead and took that out. Brake lines are all coming out. But we gotta grind all this down next time, stitch weld this, cut this back, stitch weld a couple other things, do, you know, just kind of the basic stitch welding, and stitch welding will be completely done, and the chassis will be ready to kind of start getting pieced back together with new parts. Um, the reason I haven't even bought anything for this car yet, like I literally haven't bought one upgraded part since we pulled it apart, is because I feel like when you do things this way, when you don't have a lot of money, you can't buy a bunch of car parts at once. It really makes you focus and take your time and work hard on the little things and really put your effort into building the car. So that's why I'm doing it this way. I want the whole chassis to be completely done and then I can start piecing it together instead of piecing it together and then having to pull it back apart and then piece it together and pull it back together. I want to build the chassis then get the engine in, then get the trans in, then get the wiring harness in, and then start it up all step by step. And uh, hopefully I don't have to take two steps back. So we'll catch you next time, guys. Hope you enjoyed this video. And uh, make sure to give it a huge thumbs up.